In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserved your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father in heaven, you have filled us with the eternal and saving light of the Word who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all we think, say, and do. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 5, beginning with verse 2. Here we see that the eternal shepherd was born in lowly Bethlehem, and he gives his people security and peace. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. 
Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace." This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson from Hebrews chapter 2 begins with verse 10. The first portion of this will serve as our sermon text. We see that Jesus is both true man and true God, and so he calls us both children and brothers. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, He too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia! All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Alleluia! 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel recorded in John chapter 7, beginning with verse 40. Glory be to you, O Lord. Here, when Jesus appeared to, to begin his ministry, he received mixed reaction from his preaching and his word. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Christ. Still others asked, How can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Christ will come from David's family and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We now join in confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Second John 1, 3 promises, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. And what truth and love here in, in Hebrews 2, 10 to 13, the first portion of our epistle lesson. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. This is the word of our God. Dear children of the Heavenly Father, because Jesus is not ashamed to call you his brothers and sisters. We know well the drill as Christmas fades away. Quick look back, the top ten lists that you see everywhere, and now a look ahead, the resolutions we make, taxes to get ready. Going to not make the same mistakes of the past year can accomplish a few goals that we didn't get done in 2014. You know, on we go. You know the drill well. Satan delights in it. Get away from Christmas. Get away from that beautiful, remember one nice night of Christmas on the radio, 
Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Ah, so much crowded around Jesus this past Christmas as always, but there it was on, on the radio, on TV, manger scenes. The Savior was born. Move on from it, Satan wants. It's what he's always wanted. The book of Hebrews is a timely one as we move on into the new year. It reminds us you don't move on from Jesus. They were being pressured to do that, these Hebrew Christians in this letter. And so the author said, don't go back to the familiar Old Covenant, Old Testament laws. That's what they grew up with. You go to the one promised in all of that, Jesus. But it was really serious as well as just familiar going back to the Old Testament for these Hebrew Christians. They were being persecuted for their faith in Jesus. Not with the old covenant, those old ways, but with Jesus, you may lose some blood. You may lose your life. So what? No matter what. May, may this section just touch our hearts here. While Satan tempts everyone not to want Jesus, you heard it here. Jesus wants you. A, a heart would have to be dead not to move, be moved by verse 13 as our Savior says, Here am I and the children God has given me. Verse 10 starts out, In braining many sons to glory. That's what the Lord has to do with everybody. He has to bring us to glory. Because we have no glory. We're sinners. We would never make it to heaven's glory. Sinners only deserve hell. Adam and Eve started it all. Shameful when they sinned. And yet defiant Adam was ashamed of God as a brand new sinner. God who had given him that woman that led him into sin. And so the unholy parade of shameful sinners, yet ashamed of God, began. And they're mentioned in Hebrews 11, some of those Old Testament names, you know, all sinners. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, many more. All no glory. Born in sin, fell into their graves in sin, except Enoch, the Lord took him to heaven. And that's the point of Hebrews 11. The Lord took them all to heaven. He brought all these sinners to glory. And the Heavenly Father did it for one reason, Jesus. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. The very first promise of the Savior Genesis 3.15 talked about suffering. The crushing of the devil's head and then the striking of Jesus Christ's heel. Jesus Christ did come. He, he was the author of salvation, all from him. He, he did make salvation perfect and literally complete through suffering, his cross. The shameful, damned cross to bring us to glory. And now as the Heavenly Father looks upon us this day, he sees verse 13. Here am I, the risen Savior. Here am I and the children God has given me. That's our salvation. And it always has been our salvation. The Heavenly Father doesn't look at us. This is a quote from Isaiah 8, the Old Testament. Here am I, the Father looks, Jesus. Promised in the Old Testament, came, risen. Here am I, and the children God has given me. 
in heaven, Revelation 7 shows those who are there, those who have been brought to glory. And they're singing a song. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Here am I. Everybody looks. It's Jesus. The Father looks. And the children you have given me. You understand how forgiveness works, don't you? In the Old Testament, New Testament, this is quoted both. This is true for both. As we confess our sins to the Heavenly Father, the Holy Heavenly Father, those sins damn us. They condemn us. But as the Heavenly Father hears us confess those sins, here am I, he hears another voice. He looks, Jesus. The Savior, the author and perfecter of our faith, the, the one who makes men holy by his suffering, the one who paid. Here am I. And you know what happens when you confess your sins. We have one who intercedes with the Father. In holy baptism, we bring our unholy children it should be an unholy baptism, whether it's a baby, a man or a woman grown. But here am I, Jesus says there. Here am I, the one who is baptized to fulfill all righteousness. Here am I, the one who brings holy to holy communion. Or holy baptism, and you know what your baptism was. And still is. A holy baptism. 2015, the First Communion, all of us come up here for an unholy communion. All of us come up here as, as sinners in the brand new year. Same old thing. Here am I, my true body and blood for you. You know what it will be. You know why you're coming up here. It will be a holy communion. Here am I. The Father in heaven will see it and accept it. Ecclesiastes 12, 7, will it happen to any of us in this year? The dust returns to the ground it came from. The Spirit returns to God who gave it. After a lifetime of sins, we fall into the grave. We meet our Maker. We meet our Maker who says, if you just stumbled throughout your whole life, James 2, 10, one sin, one of my commandments, you just stumbled. You're guilty of it all. Here am I, here am I, Father, with the place prepared for my child in heaven. We're not afraid to die. We're not afraid of Holy Communion. We're not afraid to confess our sins and be honest with our God. Here am I, the Heavenly Father hears and the children you have given me. You know, like these embattled Hebrew Christians, we struggle to fix our eyes on Jesus so that you don't lose heart. The big problems coming up maybe in the new year personally or the struggles we're going through, they, oh, they frustrate us and depress us. And The Heavenly Father doesn't struggle with you. He is very happy this day. Here am I, he hears, right at his right hand, your Savior, the author of salvation, the one who's made you holy. There are no struggles in the heart of the Heavenly Father. He has a happy heart because he has the author of salvation, completed, perfected, done, risen, now at his right hand. And the Heavenly Father just doesn't want to have a happy heart. He wants you to have a happy heart. So he sends his Holy Spirit to show you the happy heart of Jesus. Listen to our Savior here. 
Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers in the presence of the congregation. I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. A joyful Jesus. Because he has you. Not ashamed to call you his own, brothers and sisters. Happy to declare his father's name to you. My father is your father. And I'm going to teach you a prayer. Our father in heaven. Oh, how Jesus declares that. And the one that really strikes me, Jesus believed. Jesus trusted. I will put my trust in my Father in heaven. With a happy heart, he does that. You know, I think about my faith, how feeble and frustrated I get, and I get to believe in Jesus and his forgiveness and a place in heaven. Jesus got to believe in the cross that his Father's will that he trusted in, that, that holy Jesus would be damned. Perfect, innocent Jesus would be cursed instead of the world. And by that death on the cross, the Father, by damning his Son, would save us. That's what Jesus got to believe in and put his trust in. I get to believe in him, forgiveness in heaven. He had to do that for me. And he had perfect, happy trust. And I? Hmm. What a Savior. For the joy set before him endured the cross. So he could say, here am I? No, so he could say, here am I and the children God has given me. You know, have you seen the grandkids over Christmas, if you're a grandparent? Oh, what fun if you haven't seen them for a while. They'd mumble something to you and you have no clue what they've said, and mom right away says, oh, he's talking about a book that he just read. And she gives the translation of, of what he had just said. They, they know the second language of the grandkids. You have no, well, mom does. Mom knows. And when the child's naughty, mom or dad step in. Discipline, stop them, turn them from it. Oh, what a happy thing to watch. And as you're eating and a little child spills and mom and dad know whether it was on purpose and they deal with it or whether it was an accident and they clean it up and give a little bit more. The grandbaby, you hear a cry in the middle of the night and right after that you hear mom or dad's voice comforting the child right there. Mostly... And I got to see it. A lot of you had your grandkids here. Mom and dad are raising the, the grandkids. Your children are raising the grandchildren for Jesus. Baptized into his name. They're, they're raising them. For, what, what happy hearts as a grandparent. And maybe you've seen that as a grandparent. In a perfect way, that's what our Heavenly Father sees looks at his son, here am I, and the children you have given me. And as Jesus deals with all of us, whether it's sloth or a sin, our Savior will step in to discipline, always with that happy heart. I'm not ashamed of my children. A little work to do here, but they're mine. Brothers and sisters, my family. When you're discouraged, when you're frustrated, sends the Holy Spirit through word and sacraments, Holy Communion, here am I. Here am I. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. I think we worry too much about me being happy. You know, I'm, and I trust the Lord. And I, we, we draw our strength from our joy and our, our commitment to the Lord. 
ah, the Bible says don't do that. Nehemiah 8.10, do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Whether you're happy or not, Jesus is happy that you're his own. That's our strength. The Father is happy because the Son sits at his right hand, our Savior. Jesus is happy as he watches over you until heaven. Those there, Revelation 7, take a look at it. Oh, what a happy picture. Here am I in heaven and all those God has given me. What a celebration they're having right now. Until that day, Satan has work to do. Get you away from Jesus. Get you away. Like with the Hebrew Christians. To the point of shedding of blood, it says in Hebrews 12, getting very serious, the persecution there. Maybe it'll happen here. Whatever. Satan will use anything. Prosperity, if not persecution, anything. Get you away from Jesus because then judgment day for you would be there you are. There you are without my son. And now I'll deal with you. Hell. And so Satan has his work to do. What work do we have to do? We have epiphany coming up. That's our work as a church. Epiphany means to make known. Make known. Shine the light on Jesus. Look at him clearly and fully. And this is the Jesus we see. Here am I. Says it to the Father. Says it to us. Here am I. And the children God has given me. Jesus Christ, who has all things, is overjoyed because he has you. Amen. As Jude one twenty one encourages, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Amen.
We pray. As the devil, the world, and our sinful nature ever tug at our hearts to ignore or even leave you, Lord Jesus, always show us your heart. Here you are in Holy Scripture declaring your joy in us. Forgive us, O Savior, for divided hearts. By your undivided love for us, restore and keep us until the day we perfectly and eternally praise you in heaven. And we thank you, O Lord of the Church, for our new member, Reginald Merrill. Keep us committed to his spiritual care as his brothers and sisters in Christ. Use all our gifts mightily as we worship and work together to proclaim to the world a Savior from sin. Dear Lord of the Church, bless the newly elected and installed leaders of this congregation with your wisdom and your strength. Keep their decisions right and their lives pure as you guide them by your word. By word and example, may they always shine for you among our congregation, the souls you bought with your own blood. And hear us now, dear Father in heaven, as we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the wonder and mystery of his birth, you have opened our eyes to the glory of your grace and renewed in our hearts the fervor of your love. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. O God, the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Good morning and welcome to all of you. Uh, just a few announcements, if I, if I may. Uh, first of all, Bible class and Sunday school resume today. I will have a Bible class uh, and start a, uh, a series on Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. We'll have an introduction and then we'll go through the first 12 chapters in the course of the next 12 uh, Sundays, I believe that's correct, until Easter. After Easter, we'll have a chance on Sunday morning uh, to take a look at um, the Muslim religion, uh, Islam, uh, and that will be a, a study until the end of the year. Uh, also, Bible classes resume on Wednesday morning and evening this week, as well as school and other things. Um, two other things I want to mention. Uh, first of all, Epiphany will be celebrated next Sunday, and so the trees will remain up for another week. Uh, and then January 12th, the Monday night service, after the Monday night service at 7.30, anybody who is able, uh, willing to help out to, to take down those decorations and those trees, uh, we'd, we'd ask you to come uh, at that time on the January 12th. And then finally, uh, uh, it, there's an announcement about missionary support uh, information posted on the bulletin board in the church basement. That's related to the, to the missionary that we had last Sunday, uh, the East Asia missionary. Um, the information is there for you on the bulletin that he presented last week about how we uh, might be able to support this mission uh, in, in the Eastern Asia area, one of our Wells missionaries. So we pray for that ministry, and also if, you, if the Lord blesses you to, to support that, the information is in the basement posted for you. May God bless your week.